So today we're making an ironing board cover for my ironing board and what you'll need for this project is some fabric, it could be any fabric, but I'm using a black cotton fabric, some fleece for the inner lining, some elastic, scissors, chalk, a ruler, a safety pin, and some straight pins, and of course your sewing machine and your ironing board. So I'm going to start by showing you how destroyed my ironing board cover is. My cat clawed at it and totally destroyed it. So I'm going to remove it from my ironing board and I'm going to remove the inner lining and I'm going to set it aside because you'll need that later. I'm going to lay out my black cotton fabric and I'm going to place my ironing board on top of it face down. Go ahead and grab your chalk and you're going to start to outline your ironing board on top of your fabric. You need to put your ironing board aside. You won't need that right now. Three inches on your ruler. You're going to trace a three inch perimeter around that outline you just did all the way around. And that's going to allow for us to make an elastic uh, casing later. And um, it's going to fit over your ironing board just like a fitted sheet would fit around your bed. So continue three inches all the way around the outline you just did. And once you have your outline all outlined, you're going to go ahead and cut on the dotted lines with your scissors. Okay, once you got that all cut out, go ahead and grab your pins because we're going to start pinning around the rim there. And I have um, some pretty thin elastic, so I don't need a big casing for my elastic to fit through. So I'm doing about a half an inch fold and I'm pinning around um, the entire perimeter. I am using my scissor to clip in the corner there so that um, when I'm pleating around those corners, it folds a little bit better and flatter, um, if that makes sense. But um, just do your best and go ahead and try to fold half an inch or an inch, depending on your elastic size, all the way around the rim there. And um, you're gonna leave a 1 4 gap at the end. Don't sew all the way around to the end. Leave a little gap because you're gonna need that for your elastic to fit through. That's how my pin's outlined. You can see that little pleat in the corner there. And I left a little gap for my elastic to get through. So let's now measure out our elastic. And I'm going to measure it out to um, the inner outline that we did of our ironing board. I'm not going to measure it right out to the rim because I want it to be tight and scrunch up. So um, now take your safety pin and clip it to the end of your elastic find that little gap that you left open while sewing and go ahead and feed it through. And I'm going to go ahead and feed it through the entire rim. And once you get it through, you, you can clip the two pieces of elastic together so you can start opening it up and messing around with it. I'm going to fit it onto my ironing board now and see how it fits. And it fits good. And when you see when I flip it over, I still have a lot of elastic left. So I'm going to pull it tight and then I'm going to clip it and overlap it and sew it back and forth a few times in my sewing machine. Then I'm going to sew over that gap that I left open. And once you do that, you're all done with that part. Lay out your fleece. I have some old fleece here. And lay out the old inner lining so you can have a perfect... Um, replica of the old fabric and make it thicker, double lined. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And once 
should get it all cut out. You can go ahead and lay your ironing board down, place it on top, make sure it fits well. Move it out. Take your new ironing board cover and place it over. Make sure everything fits. You can do different colors, different styles. And you have a perfectly new ironing board cover. Look how beautiful. Fits perfect. Thanks for watching, guys.